Hello everyone and welcome to Del Monte on Science. I'm Lou Del Monte and today this is part five. We're talking about the relationship between time, energy, and existence. So what I'm talking about for the most part is in my new book, Unraveling the Universe's Mysteries, and I'm going to be talking about uh, time dilation. We touched on that in the uh, last video posts that have uh, recently gone up. And I'm going to give you two examples that are in the book and is a, an entire appendices of uh, examples and actual experiments that prove that time dilation is a real phenomena. So what are the two examples? Well, the first example I'd like you to envision that you're on the Earth, this is the Earth, and you have a, a twin, and you leave your twin, and, you, and, and for example, we're going to say that your twin was 25 years old when you left. And you go into a rocket ship, and you zoom away, and you're in here, and you zoom away at the speed, at a speed that approaches the speed of light in a vacuum, and then you, and let's say on your rocket ship, that as far as you're concerned, you do a round trip, you go to some of the outer, say uh, stars and you use uh, some of the nearby stars and then you come back you do a round trip and you reland on the earth and this whole trip takes you one year so now you're 26 but when you meet your twin when you meet your twin your twin is 50. Now, I'm just using the numbers to illustrate this. This is called the twin paradox. What happened is time moved very slow for you because you were moving close to the speed of light. And time moved normally for your twin. This has been proven in particle accelerators. The twin paradox is a science fact. Now, they haven't used people, they've used subatomic particles, but they have proved, and I have that written down in appendix, appendix in the appendices of the book, they have proved that the twin paradox is real. Now, the second example I want to give you is related to gravitation. You can cause that was time dilation that we just did. Well, let's assume that your twin, once again, is standing on the Earth. There he is. And again, let's assume that he is uh, 25 years old. And let's assume that you go to the sun without getting burned up or anything. You have all the proper equipment that would keep you from being incinerated. This is a hypothetical. And you are, when you arrived at the sun, you were about the same age as your twin, that you, you went at, at very low speed so that there was no real time dilation. So you're both 25. Except now the sun is many times more massive. Let's call the Earth, the mass of the Earth, M1, and the mass of the sun, M2. Well, M2 is many times greater than M1. And while you're close to the sun, you are, you are actually experiencing time dilation because of the energy of gravity. Okay, now that's been proven also. 
So now when you return to the Earth, very slowly, your twin might be, I'm just going to put a number down, might be 30, and you might be 26. When you get back and you return to the Earth, you're 26. So he aged more than you did because you absorbed energy due to gravitation. That's called gravitational time dilation. That's been proven. Okay, that there's no doubt that that is true. Uh, and in the appendices of the book, uh, they did an experiment where they had a clock, an atomic clock. So this is an atomic clock. And this is another clock, an atomic clock. See, an atomic clock is a clock that has a decay, at, and the rate of decay uh, is uh, very constant. Okay, so it can be used to be a very accurate measure of time. And they, they separated the atomic clock, here was the Earth, and they separated these atomic clocks by one meter. And they found out that the one closer to the Earth, this clock, which I'm going to call clock one, was running slower. It was slower than this clock, which was running faster. And why was that the case? Because the gravitational field of the Earth was felt more by clock one than clock two. Now, I know this sounds like science fiction, but it's not. It's science fact. And these, these have been documented, and they're accepted by the scientific community. It's a verified fact. And it turns out that whether you're talking about adding energy in the form of kinetic energy, or adding energy in the form of gravitational energy, it's all energy. And so they're additive. If you're moving in a highly strong gravitational field, the time dilation is even greater. It's additive. So now let's use everything we've, we've learned to interpret the existence equation and to interpret what it means to exist. Let's just start with that movement in the fourth dimension requires energy. Ke, this is the existence equation, equals minus 0.3 mc squared. And that when we add energy in the form of either gravitational energy or kinetic energy, we extend the life or the existence of any mass, which could be a subatomic particle, which has a very short life. But by adding energy, we actually extend its life. Now, what does this suggest about the nature of time? According to our definition, the way we're looking at time, time is a measure of existence. So a mass moving in time is by definition existence. And the energy it requires to exist is defined by this equation. And what we're going to do is we're, we're going to ask in the next video, we're going to ask, where does this mass, at any mass, our galaxy, where does the mass get the energy to exist? And I think you'll find the answer fascinating. Thank you.